Hello, Patreon exclusive tutorial. So we are painting this. Let me just check that I've actually pressed record this time. Yes, it is actually recording. I had to check. It might not have been. Let's do some painting. Okay, close up camera, that will do. Let's get me in the corner. Hello. Right. So this is where we were up to. We have been doing freckles, we were doing highlights, we were changing the colour slightly. There's still more of all of that to go, but it is starting to look more detailed now. Tell you what, let's start doing the stubble. Um, okay, so for that I normally use umber and blue gray in different quantities and for different things but let's start off um yeah that brush might be okay okay so let's get some blue i only want this to be thin so let me put it somewhere where i can really wash it down I'm just making this as thin as I can because this is just to be a very, very, very subtle effect which I will build up. So I'm starting off with the, what was it, blue-grey colour. I couldn't remember what it was called. And I'm simply painting a thin wash where the stubble is on the face. And this is where reference pictures are important because different people have um, the stubble, the beards, growing in different places at different strengths. And you have to see what each one is because you have to do it in the shape of the person. You can't just paint grey or brown or whatever over the whole thing it has to be done to be the the, the shape of the person that you're doing because sometimes you will add stubble and it might look you know might look like stubble but if you just get the shape because it's usually things like where it comes uh, down around from the the moustache area and down here and then there are usually bits here that don't have as much or it can be the shape here sometimes it's darker here those different shapes and look at different people look at you know actors that you know and look at them all they've all got different shape stubble growths and getting those right can make all the difference okay so this is just a thin layer of this bluey grey to start off with and while we've got this colour I'm just going to add a little bit more into the corner of the eyes up here just because I feel like and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking okay that will look good if we do that I actually want to get a little bit of it and no one's really going to see this. It's so subtle, it's almost non-existent. But I want it there on the side of the nose. I'm going to put some bright red on. And do I do a wash or do I do some speckles? Um, hmm. I'm not even sure yet. Okay, so let's make it super duper duper thin. Throw that brush in there. Let's get this brush. And I just want some. Let's see if I can get this in the right place. Yeah. I know you can't really see that happening, but I can just see the slightest impression of it appearing on the on the head. I mean, I can't even really see the colour happening, but I can see. Uh, dots of liquid when it appears and I can tell where 
some new, um, you know, some new, because it's mostly water, because this is so thin. So I can see where liquid has hit the dry head more than I can see actually the colors that's going down. But I know what color I am putting down because I chose it. Okay. So at the moment, the eyeballs are just whatever the color of the skin is that I've been working on. But because I've been painting um, sort of red and purple and brown thin layers around the eyelids and stuff like that, what's happened is the original pale color of the skin that was on the eyeballs has sort of got a, an edge um, of those red and brown and purple colors um, around the edge of the eyeball. And what that does, that actually helps because it exaggerates the round shape of the eye. It almost acts like fake shadows. Right, the way I'm holding this, I'm holding the head. I'm using the thumb of my left hand to steady the brush. This is what I do when I'm painting delicate bits um, and bits that I, I know I need a steady hand for. I use the hand that I am holding the head in. I use that thumb to steady the brush and it lets me do the thing without accidentally wobbling and painting all over the place. Now, on, even though it's technically not because you're seeing the, the light reflections coming off that and sometimes on certain heads, I like to exaggerate that a little bit just so it looks like more like how we saw on screen i don't want to do it too much because then when people put it under their own lights it'll be too much but you've got to it's a it's a thing that you have to judge for yourself while you're doing it how much do i want to do that do i need to do it at all um okay so let me bring that back in i can never remember where i have that sitting Still wobbling, but that's okay. Let's go back to it. <laughs> nope, still wobbling. Come on, stop, 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 stop. Okay, there you go. Got it in the right place. So I just want to mix. Let's see, what's that color? Mm. Actually, that might be okay. It's not exactly the color I was thinking of, but it might help. I'm just going to get some of that color that I was using earlier actually let me mix a little bit of the funnily enough a little bit of the eye color which is pale flesh after all that's what I'm using anyway mix that thinner I'm just gonna dab 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 let me guess some of that again I put that on quite thick this time, but I want to blend it around. So rub it off the brush, go back in, and then just dab, 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 dab. Blend it around, make it a little bit lighter. On the eyeball, I use a thin layer of grey usually to create a shadow under, or like right up underneath. The, the top eyelid where it touches the eyeball because in reality that bit is usually darker when we the way we see people but on this scale because it's so small it doesn't create uh, on that size it doesn't create that much shadow so I usually paint in a bit of shadow on the eyeball using grey in addition to the usual colours that I do of everywhere else okay let's Put his little wig back on and just have a look to see how that's coming together. So it's always better to do it more subtle than you think and slowly build it up than to go in heavy. Then all of a sudden uh, you might have seen if you are a figure collector. Um, over the years, there have been a, a number of figures released where you will see lots of complaining going on on the forums because a certain character, whichever figure it is, has been given too much stubble and it basically looks like they've 
got just a dark brown shadow around the bottom of their face where it should be a really subtle stubble effect and I know I've repainted a few over the years um, and fixed that so I've, I've basically done a full repaint on it but part of the full repaint was to correct excess stubble or incorrect stubble on on whatever figure it was and there's been different ones um so it's always better to go in light and then fix it oh i've got a hair on the head where have you come from go away i know some painters will probably not be this careful doing this they will just put a single layer of you know they will airbrush a generic stubble color over the face and they'll have the same one that they do on all the heads and they'll airbrush a stubble effect in roughly the right place and it'll look fine and it will look fine once they've you know they've picked out the color that they know they want to do and they use the same color every time and the same strength every time and they just got sort of paint in the approximate right places and it will look fine but I'm not trying to make things look fine I'm not getting paid to make things look fine I'm trying to make it look like the actual person so that's why I do things in lots of layers, possibly more layers than I need, possibly with more care and more attention and more detail than I need, but that's usually when I get people emailing me from wherever they are in the world saying thanks, it's usually stuff like that that they're saying thanks for. So. I will carry on doing all this ridiculous excessive detail because that's that's what I do. And I think next time we can start on the eyes, which is going to be interesting in showing you all how I do that. So that basically includes the eyelids, um, how I give the effect of eyelashes, I don't usually paint individual eyelashes because for me they usually look a bit exaggerated and, and you wouldn't normally see them at that scale, at that size. If you're looking at someone on the other side of a room, you don't really see eyelashes. Um, but I use shadows and stuff to give the impression of eyelashes. It's different on different heads. I go by what I think will work best on each individual head. Like I said, I don't have a set method of working that I apply to all heads. I look at each one as if I've never painted one before and say, okay, what will work the best for this? So there's going to be that, the eyelashes, the shadows, the the pink bit in the corner of your eye, um, the pupils, the eyebrows, the different um, layers that I use to make eyebrows, like six different layers. Some people just kind of brush a bit of brown on and that works and you can get away with that but I use about six different layers of colors and then paint highlight bits on top. It works. So, okay, that's 52 minutes. That'll do for this one. Uh, I will wash this brush. Well, now, I suppose. I was going to do it after. I thought, why, why am I doing it after? Just do it now. There you go. It's done. Um, I will go and make myself a coffee and then get on with something else and I'll get this video ready to be uploaded. Um, right. I will see you next time. Um, I um, I forgot what I was going to say then. I was going to say something, and right as I was about to say it, jumped out of my head. Never mind. I'll see you next time. Have a good day, and I'll catch you soon.